State on fourth and two, up two. Matt Miller to Kevin Lockett. Kansas State leads by nine. In the second quarter, Miller had to come out suffering from dehydration. Brian Kavanaugh comes in. He hits Mitch running in stride. Kansas State up 27-7 at the half, and their defense was dominating. Sacking Mark Williams is Tim Colston. KSU rolls in this in-state rivalry. Guess what? Goalpost coming down and off to some celebration in Manhattan. Kansas held to 19 net rushing yards. Kansas State had two 100-yard rushers in the same game. For the first time in 16 years, they end the Kansas hopes of a perfect Florida and Georgia and all Danny Werfel to Chris Doring, one of two touchdowns they hit. Werfel was on fire again to Doring. Four touchdowns in the first half, five for the game. No, these are not replays. They all happen. The Collinsworth S. Doring, three of the five catches, all Florida. They've won their last six against Georgia, 11 straight on the road in the SEC. Werfel's Heisman hopes continue to be buoyed by this. South Carolina, Tennessee, you want to talk about quarterback shootouts? That's what Manning and Tannehill was supposed to be. Vols up 14-0 in the second. Peyton Manning scrambles. Then hits Joey Kent. He got help from the umpire who picked the DB. Touchdown, 35 yards, 21-0 Tennessee. Tannehill brings him back as Corey Bridges to the corner of the end zone. 11-yard score. It's a 14-point Tennessee lead. Manning responds on the Vols' next possession, though. Kent, as Craig James pointed out earlier, in stride, and you can't catch him then. 47-yard score, volunteers by 21. Then after a Tanny Hill interception, Tennessee in position, final play of the half, field goal, a fake in Jason Price, the dagger to the South Carolina heart. In just seven minutes of possession in the first half, Philip Fulmer's team scored 35. They go on to win by 35. You see Manning, the better numbers than Tanny Hill on this day. Iowa and Ohio State. First play of the game for the Buckeyes. Bobby Hoy to Terry Glenn. You want to talk about a Heisman candidate? What a day this receiver had, keeping himself in the mix. Bucks went up 7-0 on an Eddie George run. Later in the quarter, fourth and three. Hoying to Glenn in the flat in the end zone. 35 yards, 14-0 Buckeyes. Now 42-0 Ohio State and George. And watch Glenn with the block on number three the second time he did that to spring George for a touchdown run. A 4-TD day for George. The Buckeyes roll in the horseshoe. This was 56-0 at one point. It ended up 56-35. If the voters saw the game, they'll credit Ohio State. If they just see the score, they won't give them as much credit for as dominant this game was. There were some thrillers this college football Saturday. The team that's been the thriller of the season, Northwestern Wildcats in Champaign to take on Illinois. A scoreless first quarter. Scott Weaver's the Illinois quarterback looking for Jason Dulick. Deflected, but right into the hands of freshman Rob Majoy. 38 yards, set up an Illini touchdown. Illinois led 7-0. They led 14-0, but Northwestern charges back to 14-10 in the fourth. On fourth and inches, not the sneak. They risk it and go wide, and Darnell Autry gets in. Northwestern leads 17-14. Purple Power made the trip to Champaign. Buck 29 left. Illinois, one last chance on fourth and six. Weaver to duel at 27 yards. They're alive in field goal range to tie it. Second and nine. One thing you don't want to do is take a sack. Disaster on Matt Rice sack back to the 32. Now you definitely don't want to take a sack. Bad snap, double disaster. Another sack out of field goal range. All Illinois can do is take a Hail Mary shot at the end zone. Weaver scrambling, unloads as he sees Dulick breaking free for a second, but the strong safety Eric Collier's there for the INT. A dejected Weaver watches Northwestern celebrate in Champaign. Illinois one and three in conference, disappointing season, but the Northwestern story continues. Autry over 100 again. Schnurr missed just one of his 19 passes. Northwestern 5 and 0 oh in the big Southern Cal in Seattle against Washington. A scare here. On the reverse, a knocked out of bounds into the head linesman Bob Beal, who uh, returned with a bloodied nose. Three nothing Huskies in the second. Leon Neal bouncing off four USC tackling. Ten nothing Washington leads. Thirteen nothing Washington. Third quarter. Leon Neal, he's gone. Forty six yards. Go for two and get it. Huskies up 21-0. Looks like back to back disaster for John Robinson. Here comes USC down 21-7. Brad Ott to Terry Barnum. Touchdown. It's a 21-14 game. Then. Otten. Two yards as you see time running down USC's defense 
got tighter, and they tie the game on the touchdown pass to the tight end. They go for one, and here's why. The game ends 21-21. Via the tiebreaker procedure in the Pac-10, Washington's non-conference two-loss football against Minnesota. The jug has been Michigan, 16 in the last 17. Oh, let's just make it 17 out of the 18 years. Tamanga Biaka Batuka, a huge day. 52-yard touchdown, over 100 in the first quarter. It's 14-0 Michigan. Then Brian Greasy still starting, even though Dreisbach has the pins out of his injured thumb. Greasy to Amani Toomer, 75-yard touchdown. All maize and blue, Michigan in front of 105,000 in A squared, beating Minnesota 52 to 17. Still within the conference with Joe Paterno and Penn State lose a third straight home game. That's never happened before. Taking on Indiana today, this was decided early. Chris Ditto passes off the hands of a Jamu Stoner to Aaron Collins, and the linebacker from Penn State gets a great block by Clint Holes. Takes out Ditto, a would-be tackler. Ends the first quarter with an 80-yard touchdown return. Lions up 14-0. And the Hoosiers a fifth straight loss, turning five Indiana turnovers into 31 Penn State points. Boston College at Notre Dame. Redemption after two years of Eagle wins over the Irish. Mark Edwards, he has been great this month. Opening drive, the little dump to Edwards. 17 yards, 11th touchdown this year. Holtz from the press box, up 7-0. Defense comes up from the Irish 20 BC driving. Mark Hartzell intercepted by Laron Moore. That drive stall. Derek Mays didn't see the ball in the first half, but in the third quarter, the Irish lead just three. It's Paulus to Mays. First catch of the game, big Irish first down at the 17. Set up an Edwards touchdown from two yards, 17-7. Fourth quarter, BC driving again in the red zone. Again, disaster. Another interception. Lyron Cobbett, Hartzell, 13 interceptions this year. BC didn't play all that poorly. Notre Dame played well. BC now will not go to a bowl. The best they can do is six and six. Irish avoid the third straight loss to the Eagles. New Mexico trailing 10-7 and on the move. But quarterback Scott Peterson fumbles. Marcus Coleman picks it up. Oh, can he make it? Come on, get the, he's got it. 92 yards for a touchdown. Red Raiders go up by 10, and in Albuquerque, they win going away 34 to seven. Zebby Lethridge, two touchdowns rushing, no interceptions, 209 straight games without an INT. Texas A&M gave up the first seven to Houston, but then scored 31 in a row. The Aggies have won 30 straight at home, pulling 15 of 27. McElroy didn't play, strained back. Arizona State, a two-touchdown underdog, goes into Eugene and shocks number 10, Oregon, 35-24. That's now a final big day for Jake Plummer. Arizona State, first, Okie State, touchdown pass to Ed Williams, 10-7, Iowa State. Well, that's an Iowa State score, 10-7 at the half. Now, Troy Davis, who dominated the second half, scoring from eight yards out, 202 yards on the day. Folks, is closing in on 2,000 yards here. He has 15-26 with three games left. Iowa State beats Oklahoma State, first win in the conference this year. Pop you back to the Big Ten for Michigan State and Wisconsin. A rough day for Tony Banks, who's been battered all year. Tariq Salee, the hit for Wisconsin there. Badgers had a 31-7 lead. Matt Nyquist, great catch, maybe the best of the day. On the narrow bevel pass on Wisconsin, they roll over Michigan State by 31 seven quarterback sacks for the defense in this one. To the ACC for Clemson and Georgia Tech. 7-3, the Clemson lead. Nalon Green has a very good month of October under his belt, and Antoine Wyatt had a great day. Almost 200 yards of total offense, including this 61-yard score. Clemson has won six straight road games. Last time a Clemson team did that, the 81 national champs. And Emmett Smith was on hand to see his brother Emery run for 100 yards. You see the wake? See those numbers for Rusty LaRue? And that's Pittsburgh moving the ball. Pete Gonzalez to Curtis Anderson, trying to get towards the end zone. He fumbles the ball. It's picked up by Paul Rivers. Rivers is rolling. Misses the quarterback, Gonzalez, and will go 100 yards. A 100-yard fumble return. As Rutgers gets its first Big East win, Pittsburgh now 0-5 in the conference. Miami wins. Jamie German, 169 yards received. Against Hawaii, Bloomfield takes this handoff and goes through six. Count them, six would-be rainbow tacklers. 22-yard score, three touchdowns on the day for Tafua Bloomfield. All BYU, they lead the whack 
as they beat you trying to stop a five game losing streak against the Bears fourth quarter Cade McNown to Jim McElroy 11 yard touchdown UCLA two point play up 24 10. This is Kareem Abdul Jabbar used to be known as Charmin Shah which would allow us to say please don't squeeze the Charmin. Never mind squeeze him. Cal couldn't even come close to catching him. 50 yard gain there and Jabbar up the middle three yard touchdown UCLA cruises 33 to 16. Abdul Jabbar 217 yards rushing 